Blake Prize this year provides a wonderful introduction into the manner in which spirituality and religion and the human image occurs in contemporary art. And within that wide survey of 73 images, there's always inevitably a number of images that address issues of human justice quite confrontingly with anger and other ways sometimes more subtle and evocative. Uh, this year we have an award for human justice which is given by the Maritime Union of Australia and this year Franz Kempf has won with this very eloquent work. Uh, Franz Kempf is around the age of 86, he's an elder statesman of Australian art and an artist of Jewish cultural background who's often been concerned with issues of justice and what I see in this work is is the words and images of an old, tired man who's somewhat irritably drawing our attention to the fact that, as we remember the Holocaust, uh, it's still an ongoing story and being repeated in our culture. Why do we grow so weary of uh, these things occurring over and over again? We're confronted on television every day of the week by the most atrocious acts. Um, which flick on and flick off the television while people are sitting, some are even eating breakfast and looking at it. And I, I just find that, you know, too confronting for words. I wanted to, in this particular work, firstly express my horrors of the, the Holocaust uh, by putting figures that were at one stage lying across the camps when they were open, when the Russians and the Americans moved in, but by putting them on a tilted table, they become somehow more confronting. But that atrocious act, now we see every day on television, uh, from Pol Pot to Syria to Vietnam, everywhere. Uh, I hope to mirror th that atrocity in a more confronting way. Within the wide number of works that are offered for the Blake each year, there is this focus on justice. And so it's inevitable that some works will actually take the church and religious institutions to task. Uh, this particular work presents us with a religious, a religious written letter and it actually calls into account uh, religious leaders for their, for their hypocrisy uh, as an act of injustice. It leads us to perhaps wonder that we live uh, in a time of more openness where the church is in fact enduring more public scrutiny for its actions in society. Perhaps that's an opportunity for the church to be seen as a place that actually creates justice. This is very eloquently conveyed in this work by Rodney Popel, which has a cardinal-like religious figure uh, screaming and uh, in some sort of ecstasy and below him is this circle of small children. Uh, these are both references to a lot of images in Western art, here about power and church authority and here about the innocence, the, the dance, the, the fundamental delight of being alive in a, in a company of others. So it's a, a very potent symbol, these two things put side by side. Maybe this work directly addresses clergy abuse and Perhaps we should be grateful that these issues are now being visualised, spoken about, narrated. We're beginning to hear the stories of human beings who've undergone these sorts of experiences. Again, they offer the church a challenge to be involved as a justice-making organisation. It's a uh, very dark, moody painting that I wanted to represent. Um, a sort of figure of power, whether it be a Pope or a cardinal or something like that in this sort of field, isolated field at night, surrounded by figures, innocent figures. And uh, so it fits in with um, other theories of work I've done that, that look at hypocrisy and, and halls of power, both in politics and religion. And so this fits into that genre. The central figure, or the protagonist in this, if you like, he's just sort of on a very elongated um, throne or some sort of another, and then he's surrounded by innocent children, but he's looking anything like he's in a comfortable position. I, I like to feel that it has a sense of um, his, his history in the work. It's in a very you know, dark landscape, like a, uh, 
a Goya picture or something like that with the high horizon and the remnants of a church in, in decay on the back, on the, on the horizon, if you see it. And I wanted this painting to um, evoke the centuries and centuries and centuries of, um, you know, but, you know, church rule or Catholicism, and I wanted it to sort of almost give it a sense of it's the end of that, and I, which I, I actually think it is, you know, and I think the, um, and the way this figure in the centre is uh, looking for salvation from above, but it's certainly not getting anything, and, and uh, is in some sort of state of horror, I, I, I think, and the uh, circle of children, innocent as they are, he's trapped. You know, and I think that sums up and says a lot about the current state of religion, Catholicism and that sort of thing in the world today. The winner this year of the Blake Prize is a work by Trevor Nichols, a very well-known Indigenous artist whose whole body of work is concerned with reconciliation. It's the issue that goes to the heart of justice in Australia, how we actually live with a culture of diversity and respecting uh, Aboriginal culture and the other migrant cultures that we live with. Uh, Trevor completed this work not long before he passed away late last year. So it's a testament to his lifelong passionate concern with issues of reconciliation within his own life, uh, brought up as a young Christian person and then recovering his own identity as an urban Aboriginal. Uh, this work, Metamorphosis, is perhaps an eloquent testimony to a, a body and a life of work and also a testament and invitation to consider the ramifications of reconciliation within our own culture. Bridging cultures is actually a significant part of the way of his work, particularly right from the early stage. Bridging, well, he was the embodiment of both the cultural backgrounds, Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal, and he put that in his work. So bridging those cultures was a significant aspect of his work. He didn't want to be just considered an, a, a, only an Aboriginal artist. He wanted to be considered an artist that bridged those two cult cultural aspects. And he thought that was very important. And in many ways, this is the Blake uh, yeah. initiative, the Blake Exhibition and Prize is very much about that as well, bridging across cultural backgrounds and that diversity and he certainly wanted to show that in his work as well. <laughs>